You're still watching Ways. World Water Day celebrates water and uh, um, raises awareness of the 2.2 billion people living without access to safe water. It is about taking action to tackle the global crisis. A core focus of World Water Day is to support the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goal 6, which is water and sanitation for all by 2030. So today, water is under extreme threat from a growing population, increasing demands of agriculture and um, the agriculture and industry, and also worsening impact of the climate change as society balances the demand on water resources. Many people's interests are not being taken into account on this day. Um, I told you how we lost all our Crops. sweet corn yeah. last year yeah. because of the, the climate change. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't have enough rains last year. So it. this year we had to do a proper irrigation system to be able mm. to, you know, support the sweet corn at the farmland. I mean, it's a shame really to think that something as basic as water mm. is still an issue in today's world. It feels like we've advanced in so many things. And then something as basic as water, we still have huge parts of the world who struggle um, with water. And it's a real problem, even here um, in Nigeria. I know we've we sort of normalized the sinking of boreholes and alternative sources of water. Mm. But I still remember when the water pipes were running and, you know, the state Growing provided up, water yeah. um, and all of that. But now um, none of that seems to be functioning. I think the last place I remember that kind of water still working was in Ogudu and then it stopped. Mm. So just I had water in Magudu when I first moved yeah, to Lagos. Mm -hmm. We had water. We were paying. In fact, we had water. Because mm -hmm. we see up until the time, and I lived there in that house for eight years, up until the time that I left, yeah. we were still paying water bill. But at some point, it just stopped. Yeah, yeah. it just stopped. And, and that's the same thing that I know happened in Ogudu, and mm. there was just no explanation to it. The taps just went dry, and then people had to find um, alternate sources of water. So mm. for something so crucial to life, uh, you know, uh, for me, the, the foreign narrative, you see those UNICEF videos of people carrying water, you know, mm -hmm. children carrying water in their head and you hear that narrative. And I think that's almost to a certain extent become associated with Africa. Yeah. But it's a problem that definitely um, needs absolutely needs, um, absolutely. Resolution. And that's Tammy's story for today. So Tammy, I'll just come to you. What, yes, <laughs> what did you find? Okay, personally? so my story has to do with, you know, UNICEF's findings about water, of course it's World Water Day and it has to do with children. It says, UNICEF says that 26.5 million Nigerian children experience high water vulnerability. Hmm. You know, so just reading through this because I found some interesting statistics according to UNICEF, especially with respect to you know Nigeria. You know, knowing that you know, the world water crisis is not coming here already and children are the biggest victims. That's according to Mr. Peter Hawkins, the UNICEF rep in Nigeria. And he also said that in 2020, that was last year, the Nigerian government and you know, UNICEF you know, decided they released the wash norm survey that showed some progress. But currently, there's still a lot of work to be done, saying that sustainable and equitable access to safe drinking water is still a challenge. He goes on to just talk about some of the challenges and how that we uh sorry not women now children are the most vulnerable when we talk about you know the incidences of lack of water and some of the challenges in nigeria saying that we still have a long way to go i think that's just the summary of this news so as we celebrate the world water day i think this news just brings to mind that uh, children are affected and it's such a big deal portable water drinking water like we need water for everything like everything, when I think about it, there's this Yoruba adage that says that nobody's an enemy to water. Like ah, you yes, need water so for nutrients. Water everything. no get enemy. <laughs> so, that's Absolutely. Yes. True. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, I mean, I, I started working out recently. <laughs> I saw one comment on Instagram. Someone says, every, every two, two minutes, I'm all like, yeah, you have to take water because, I mean, I've seen people, people literally die because they were dehydrated. So it's not a, it's not a function of, um, um, I mean, it's not an option, you know, it's a necessity. So whatever it will take for any serious government to, to treat this crisis, we have to take, take it seriously. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tammy. So let me come to you, Uti. Um, okay, so <laughs> mine isn't water related, um, but you know how 
I often say um, that we're stronger in our diversity. And my headline reads, 20 indigenous languages um, have gone extinct. And I mean, Nigeria is very linguistically diverse. I think we have, um, as at last count, over, I think over 500, 500 languages really? um, and dialects within um, Nigeria. So this basically is the vice chancellor of Ajuru Ignatius Ajuru University of Education in Port Harcourt um, talking about the fact that I think it was an event to commemorate, commemorate World Poetry Day. Mm. And he says that um, 20 languages, indigenous languages, have gone extinct. Now, it might not seem a lot when you have over 500, but it's what it represents in, in terms of just bits of our history being lost. And we already know that we have a problem in terms of how we've documented our history and things that have happened in the past. Mm. And you know, it's becoming trendy these days not to speak your language to your children. So <laughs> things are being lost, things are not being passed on. Yes. Uh, so for me, this story, when I saw this, I thought, you know, it's a shame to lose 20 languages. Uh, and we don't even have the structures. You know, some places you have archeologists who are, you know, trying to, and, and scholars who are studying these things who might be able to do some work around this, but when you don't have that, um, in a country like Nigeria, we just find that languages are dying out. So we tend to focus more on the, the big, you know, Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, but there's so many of these, quite languages, you know, yeah. languages and dialects that are, are quietly being lost because, you know, one reason or the other, we're not passing yeah. them along. We're not documenting them. I mean, if people can't read and write, how can they write in their chosen language? Please, let me tell Mr. Saleo. Let me tell him, because my children, they've been on our neck. Teach us Hausa, because at least, uh, I, I am from Edo State. Mm -hmm. I was born and bred in Kaduna State, so I speak Hausa and I speak, I, I speak, I understand Benin. Mm -hmm. You know, so teach, so my husband says like, oh, your, la your Hausa is too watered down. I said, how would it not be watered down? I've, I've not been in the North for so many years now. Mm -hmm. Of course, if, and language is so, it's so interesting if I don't find someone. That's why anytime I see anybody that speaks Hausa, yeah. no matter how bad my Hausa is, I try to try communicate to. Yeah. in that language because I want to keep the language, right? Uh -huh. But it's difficult for you to... So that thing you're talking about, you see, people are actually... some And funny enough, the younger generation, the young children, they're actually looking forward to it. But uh -huh. we are the ones not teaching Wait, them. It's just not trendy anymore yeah, to teach we're children. Not the ones, um, no, we're just languages. the ones not teaching yeah. them the language. I mean, it, and it's not a new thing. I think it's sort of degenerated over the generations because yeah. I remember in my generation, in my family, um, I think that it was only my, in my mom's family, mm. it was only my sisters and I who spoke Shekiri. Um, and in fact, it was just my elder sister who really speaks it. I speak it to a degree mm. and I understand it properly. My other sister only understands it. She just <laughs> doesn't, doesn't even bother to speak it. But my mom always used to say that if you don't speak your language, you don't have an identity. So she was very, very big on it. And I, I wish that more parents would take Absolutely. that. Like I try now, even though I can, And that's what you probably should do with the boys. Speak it anyway. Anyhow. As yeah, long as well, they that's true. Yeah. Oh, we need to move on. And my story is actually very hot. Uh, but I, I just thought to mention this. Um, Quara, that's hijab controversy escalates as hoodlums attack schools, um, shopping center. Um, according to, I mean, if, you, if you've if you been following the happenings in Quara State, the raging hijab controversy escalated as suspected hoodlums attacked um, schools and shopping centers in Lori. But the good thing about this um, attack was that um, security personnel, they quickly um, stepped into the situation mm -hmm. and they've been able to bring um, and calm back to um, the, the state. What caught my attention was that these hoodlums actually, you know, they were attacking Christian schools. Mm -hmm. You know, like joke, like joke. This, you know, me, I've been through religious crisis all my mm -hmm. life in the mm -hmm. North. Mm -hmm. So I understand how it starts. I know how it starts. And I'm just praying that I hope that even the Christian um, schools, the leaders in Don't the Christian schools, in the Baptist schools, they need to think twice. Mm. You know, at least you should. I mean, every religion preaches love. Right? Why can't you tolerate another person? But I went to a Muslim school, right? Yeah. It's about hijab, not wearing hijab in the school. Mm -hmm. But the good thing, again, in the story, they said the SS3 students, they've been able to um, allow them back into the school, mm -hmm. um, into some schools, to be able to, because they are prepar pre preparing for exams. So they're being attacked because they don't wear the they, hijabs. They say they do not want the, the Muslims to wear hijab into the, in, in um, the ones attending the Baptist schools. They don't want hijab. Like, come on. I attended Sheikh Abakar Gumi College in Kaduna yeah. State. I was a Christian. I mean, when you are in the assembly hall, you get a Muslim. I can say the Muslim prayer, the short version. Uh -huh. I, and they also can say the Lord's prayers. Because we were very tolerant. So where did we grow apart that all of a sudden we see a Muslim and uh -huh. you're, not, you're not identifying someone based on their religion or, uh -huh. their, or where they're from, you know, 
Where? I think you, you've hit the nail on the head. I think tolerance is everything. The fact that so much is happening ethnically in Nigeria that keeps widening this divide. It's terrible. It seems so basic to allow someone express their faith out outwardly, like wearing a hijab. That for me, it's a moot point. It's almost like a non-issue. In the UK, if you need to wear a hijab, you wear a hijab and you know, you go to school. Tammy, do you want to add something or we just move on? tolerant of one another and especially because it's not just I mean I, I read the news as well and it was just sad to see the fighting mm. and to see how that you know some of these people are you know just fighting each other in, in summary but the thing is the children are the ones that are being affected at yeah. the end of the day mm -hmm. and all the children not just the Muslim children or the Christian children Every all day. the students of the school mm -hmm. they are being affected at the end of the day Absolutely. so we, we need to look at like the long term effect for ourselves and i think that's just the what's important that absolutely right we said looking at how to come together to make it work absolutely all right so we'll just take a short break when we return we'll be featuring our ceo for the month stay with us we'll be right back